Hello, everyone, and welcome to IPC's Vendor Advantage Network Vendor Highlight for the month of July with Happier at Home. My name is Samantha Pomeroy. I'm Director of Pharmacy Services here at Independent Pharmacy Cooperative. And today I am um, joined by Debbie Marcello. She is founder and CEO of Happier at Home. So thank you so much, Debbie, for, for joining us and taking the time to, to talk with us and our, our member pharmacies about home health care. It is a rapidly growing industry um, and, and what the opportunity is for our member pharmacies to bring this to their community. So thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you so much, Samantha, for having me. It's a, a pleasure and an honor. Before we dive into Happier at Home Services, um, Debbie, I would like for you to tell our members a little bit about how Happier at Home was started. Um, you're an RN, and I really enjoyed the background that you have shared with me in, in you seeing a gap in care. Um, I believe it was with your mom and how you've, you've kind of filled that need in your community. So share a little bit about that before we get into the services. Yes. Yeah, so if you asked me 20 years ago if this was going to be my path or my purpose in life, I really would never have known. Um, I always have been very entrepreneurial, um, but at the time I was working as a ER and trauma nurse in our area's largest trauma hospital. And um, my mother on a simple drive home from work that she had driven for 30 years uh, got lost. And um, so as a result of that, uh, we learned that she had glioblastoma, a multifocal five brain tumors. And uh, in our experience of keeping her at home before she passed six months later, uh, we had to have a, um, it was a reputable um, home care company come in and just help for about an hour a day, something like that. And um, unfortunately, we were met with caregivers who really weren't engaged. They had a different caregiver coming every day. They um, would change the schedule without talking with us, or they would not not even show up. So right. I saw how terrible the system was in that the delivery of care was based on what was convenient for the home care agency, trying to just jam in as many uh, visits as they could for one uh, caregiver. So uh, before my mother passed, I even told her, I said, this is really ridiculous. I, as an advocate and a registered nurse can speak up um, for you and for our family, but what happens with the families who uh, don't speak up or don't have that advocate uh, that will um, make sure that their care is high quality and to make sure that continuity of caregivers is there. So I told her I'm going to start a business uh, in, in home care. And she said she knew it was going to be great. And, <laughs> and it is. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, thank you for sharing that with us. I'm actually going through that right now with my grandmother. And, you know, it's, it's hard. It's very, very hard. So the fact that you saw that need and you stood up and, and are the advocate, um, kudos to you. Um, so Thank let's you. get into the services. Um, what services does, does a Happier at Home franchise offer? And really, how do you see this fitting into the independent pharmacy slate space? I have your slide up um, um, discussing the services. So, so what are the services? So as a Happier at Home owner, the pharmacy owners uh, would also provide these services. Um, the four main portions of it are companion care, uh, personal assistant services, which is uh, a little more hands-on care than the companion care, mm -hmm. uh, and care advocacy, sometimes known as case management, uh, but it is a non-medical care advocacy or case management, and also medication management solutions. And uh, under each of those categories, there are different um, types of services. So the companion care we can look at as 
maybe dementia care, making sure that whoever they're caring for at home is safe and gives that family member a little break to get away to take care of themselves as well. They can do light housekeeping, meal planning and preparation, uh, medication reminders. Uh, and then when we look at personal assistance services, it may be help with nutrition, uh, turning and positioning, bathing, uh, hygiene, and things like that. Um, the care advocacy really is something that if you think about the number of families who are living afar from where their loved one is, their elderly parents, for example, um, so often they have a hard time trying to manage their life and their children's lives as well as trying to take care of their aging loved one. So the care advocacy, we step in as a kind of like a surrogate child for that person, making sure that we're arranging medical appointments, perhaps attending the medical appointments, making sure that we're a liaison between the family member and the client to um, help them to achieve their goal. And their goal usually is to remain in their home as independent as possible. Uh, and one of the other services is that medication management solutions. Mm -hmm. So as the home care company, we would go in and um, determine what the best way to deliver those medications are. Uh, deliver, I mean, for those uh, medications to be administered in the home. You know, sometimes it's compliance packaging and the person will remember to take them, but we have solutions for those who have dementia and won't remember to take those medications. So we've really managed to be able to keep patients in their home uh, where in the past they would have had to move to a, an assisted living just mm -hmm. because of needing that medication uh, management. Right. And I mean, really, this does, I, I you know, I kind of asked, how do you see this fitting into the independent pharmacy space? Um, but a lot of these things, you know, we're doing, maybe not necessarily going to the homes. So, I mean, I see it fitting in, in pretty well. Has that been your experience? It has been, and I'll tell you, when when I first started franchising about five years ago, uh, one of my most successful franchisees is a pharmacy owner, independent pharmacy owner in Buffalo, New York. And I looked at why that is. And um, as pharmacy owners, you've created this uh, reputation in your community. You've um, made these connections with the family members, with your patients and customers. And so I look at the pharmacy owners as really being a resource for the community. Mm -hmm. And I feel that it's imperative that you're able to offer um, all different kinds of services to be able to help them remain in their home and independent. So having patients walking in your front door all the time, having their family members coming in, even if you don't have a retail location, the long-term care supplying of the medications uh, is really, you have these connections with all of these referral sources that you are a, re a resource for them. You are helping them to be able to keep their patients in their home and safe uh, as far as uh, even transitional care units or rehabs, them discharging patients. You help with a safe discharge home. So you have the connection with the community and your reputation, and you have the connection with all of these um, medical professionals that are potential resources for referrals to you. So this is why I saw that independent pharmacy owners really start off quickly and do a great job um, being able to um, ramp up their business quickly with their patients in their homes. Um, and then also now with long-term care at home um, with the medications, uh, it, they just work so closely hand in hand. Just so you're yeah. you now just building up your patients uh, through happier at home. And some of them may be able to uh, be receive their medications through LTC at home. So, right. um, 
there's there's just so many synergies, whether it's creating immunizations that you can create, creating programs of immunizations, point of care testing, uh, even if you do DME, uh, mm. these types of things are feeders for each other. It's a feeder for your happier at home patients um, to increase your patient base, but then also having a patient base of your happier at home clients can be a feeder to all your programs and services of your pharmacy. Right. So do you help, um, do you help the pharmacy kind of, kind of look at their community and determine if this is an opportunity, if there's a need, um, you know, with their patient demographic in their community, do you help with that? Yes, it's part of our discovery process. So if okay. um, if you're interested, if someone's interested, they would initially reach out to us. And uh, I know on your IPC website, uh, you have a form that they could just fill out. And mm-hmm. so that uh, you're aware that they are interested and then we take it from there. So uh, one of the guys on our team, Dave, he will talk with you initially, uh, help you to understand what the business model is like and make sure this is a good fit. And then the next step would be talking with me about your territory, your potential territory. Right. So this is what helps us to show and to determine that uh, it is a viable option for you as a business. So in de- uh, developing those territories, we look at making sure that you have enough population um, in that territory that could support a private pay source of revenue for you. So that's by large what Happier at Home is, is your revenue is private pay, no insurances, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, so we look at the general population of being at least 300,000. We look at the senior population of at least 40,000. And then we're also looking at the average household income in general and those that are 65 and older. So I've had people come to me so many times and say, my area is so rural and we have more areas in it. We make sure that the territory is going to support your business. And I've heard from multiple pharmacy owners that are franchisees of ours also that because there are rural areas, that there's such a need for those services uh, Mm -hmm. that other companies just aren't going in there. Uh, And if you're doing delivering, uh, you you have these connections already. So it's really it's really a great synergy. Okay. Um, you know, we just, um, IPC, we were just at McKesson Idea Share, and we had a lot of members that, that joined us there. And, you know, home health care and non-traditional pharmacy business styles was, was a big topic that was consistently brought up. So I'm really happy to see that our member pharmacies are truly future ready in their business and branching out and really becoming that total healthcare destination for their community. So let's discuss some of the benefits of, of expanding into home health care w- with Happier at Home. Sure, it is definitely a strategy for growth for mm-hmm. your pharmacy owners. So at, you would actually set up a separate entity, um, but it would be owned by whomever. If it's the pharmacy owner, uh, then it would be owned by the pharmacy owner. But um, being able to have this separate entity, you're able to have a, a larger profit margin and that uh, and stay out of regulation that has to do with the pharmacy. So, and, you know, speaking of regulation, depending on your state, there may or may not be licensure uh, that's required, but we would help you through that. Um, But another benefit of expanding, as I said, is having that private pay source of revenue. Uh, By large, home, or excuse me, health insurance doesn't cover uh, home care unless Mm -hmm. it's more episodic. If they're being discharged after a hospital stay or surgery, then they may need a short-term care that may be covered by health insurance. But what we're looking for is really those people who uh, we're going to have as patients long-term. Our average length of stay is about two years for each of our patients. Um, So, uh, you know, looking at the um, private pay 
as as opposed to having to be dictated to by the health insurance companies is a wonderful thing. Um, and it it is covered by long-term care insurance. There's more and more long-term care insurance policies out there, and we help step you through how to do that. And it's, it's seamless. It's very easy. They usually have portals for you to just submit uh, the, the uh, schedule and the caregiver's activities of daily living list. Mm -hmm. And then also um, being that you are the hub in your community, um, you really should be the senior, the the uh, authority in senior care in your community. So having this business will help you to establish yourself as that. We um, also look at all of the referral sources, as I said, uh, for, from doctor's offices that you may deal with, assisted living, independent living facilities, uh, transitional care, SNFs, all of those. Um, and we go through all of this in our training. We have very extensive training. Um, and then also being able to have uh, referrals to your pharmacy. You could mm -hmm. uh, make specials for your uh, patients of Happier at Home and, you know, offer their your compliance packaging to them or whatever uh, else you may offer. Um, and of course, you're doing a service for your community by enabling your uh, the seniors in your community to be able to remain in their home. Uh, as you know, if you have a safe discharge home, if you have someone in your happier at home company, a caregiver that's going to help someone after discharge, that's going to help to reduce the readmissions as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a no brainer for physicians, for hospital discharge planners, uh, for transitional care units when they're discharging patients to refer to you. It doesn't cost the healthcare system anything. It will cost them money if they don't refer to you right. uh, with readmissions. Uh, and then also, of course, medication noncompliance is a huge issue. It's one of the number one reasons people are bounced into the hospital or into SNFs. Um, so really being able to help that increase medication compliance, you're helping uh, the patient you're, and you're helping the healthcare system itself. Right. You know, one thing that I have really enjoyed hearing from the members that we do have with, with Happier at Home is just, you know, all of the education, the training, and the support that you guys provide. I mean, your videos are phenomenal. You do a wonderful job with that. So we've really appreciated that. Um, so IPC has partnered with, with Happier at Home to bring this not only to our GPO members, but to our warehouse customer or warehouse member base as well. Um, so it's a great offer to participate. We, with our member, with your membership with IPC, you get 10% off of the franchise fee. I mean, you also get six months of franchise marketing for free, which is huge. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, pharmacies will bring in services, but it's really getting the word out into the community. You know, what are the services? Um, so can you kind of elaborate just real quickly on what that marketing looks like? Sure. Um, we have a really robust marketing um, plan. And so what we do for our franchisees is our search engine optimization is AI um, enabled. So mm -hmm. we it, it, it is state of the art SEO. Um, so that's one of the things. So each of your websites, we optimize and we make unique content for it. So we're not uh, cannibalizing each other on Google. Right. Um, but then also we create your happier at home Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook pages. Um, with those, we post content. We create the content and post uh, twice a week. And so those uh, that helps to keep your uh, happier at home company out in um, in the public and in front of their eyes. So if they don't need services at that moment, then you're top of mind all the time. 
uh, there, our marketing program is is really incredible. The I know you referenced the videos that I make. Um, I also go on to our local Fox News channel every Monday just to educate the community about issues having to do with caregiving or seniors. And those uh, short three to four minute appearances we use for email campaigns for our franchisees. So we That's manage great. that for you as well. Uh, so all of your customer base through your pharmacy, uh, you'll be able to use that a customer uh, email list to tell them about your grand opening. And then it's not asking for a sale. You're not just blasting them with, hey, try us. Um, we really just want you to be known as that senior authority in senior care and um, educate your public. And then um, as it is a service that sells itself, you know, when right. I had my local company, it was the assessment is supposed to be kind of like the sales call, but you're going there and you're showing your uh, customer or patient where their deficits lie and how you can help them stay home instead of moving on to an assisted living or skilled right. nursing. So you're really doing a great service and it it doesn't become a sales call. It's how are you going to help that person? Right. And that's really important for, for our pharmacy owners. Um, you know, just, you know, that they, like you said, they have those relationships. Um, there's so many now that are wanting to grow old at home. So how can we incorporate this into our business um, as an independent pharmacy? And I think, I think it's a perfect fit. Debbie, thank you so much for joining us today um, and being, you know, a great partner. We're very happy to partner with you. You've taken great care of our members. Um, so there is a, um, there is a link here on this last screen uh, for Happier at Home Franchise Opportunity. If you're interested, um, please go to that link, fill out the information, and we will get back with you, um, you know, with, with more information on the opportunity and answer any questions that you have. So um, thank you so much, Debbie. We really appreciate the time today. Um, and thank you to everyone that watched. We hope you have a good day. Thank you so much, Samantha.